Welcome everyone. Welcome to today's session. Today we'll be doing a sample paper for Delvich Grammar, Delvich School, private school. And the first question is really easy. The best way of doing them is you try doing it yourself and then see my answers or you stop and go back and see the answers. So the first one is 543 plus 284. And you just need to do it. 3 plus 4 is 7. 4 plus 8 is 12. 2 carry over 1. 5 plus 2 is 7. And you have 1 carry over. That's 8. So your answer is 827. The next one is 543 minus 284. The same one, you just need to minus in this one. You can't do it. You ask this. This gives you, it becomes 3. This becomes 13. 13 plus 4 is 9. 3 minus 8, you can't do it. You borrow from 5. That becomes 4. And this becomes 13. 13 minus 8 is 5. And 4 minus 2 is 2. So your answer for this one is 259. This was an easy one. Let's move on to the next one now. The next one is you need to just multiply and see. So you need to multiply 543 multiplied by 6, 3, 6 are 18. 8 is to 1, 4, 6 are 24, plus 5, 2, 5, 2 is are 30, add 2 is 32. So your answer is 3, 2, 5, 8. Next one is 3, 2, 5, 8 divided by 9. So you need to remember your dividing skills in this one. Long division divided by 9. And when you do it, your answer would be 362. So let's move on to the next one now. I will zoom in for you guys a little bit. So you have in this one, you need to arrange the falling into, into smallest to biggest, uh, smallest to largest. And then you need to find what it is. The best way is you could also write 305, put this into decimals, try putting them in decimals and see what your answer is. And write Half, if I put it in decimals, will be 0 0.3. And this one is also already in decimals. And if you write 35% into decimals, that will be 0 0.35. And 3 by 10 into decimal would be 0 0.3. Three. Now, all of them are in decimals. Now you can work out which one is what. So look at them and then your answer would be 3 by 10 will be the first one. Second will be 0 0.305. Then you will have one third. And the last one would be 35%. That was an easy one. The next is the missing numbers. Fill in the filling, uh, fill in the missing numbers of the sequences. You need to see the sequences. What's happening? 22 to 29, 29 to 36. If I see that, we are adding 7 in all, all of them. So the rule is plus 7. So if I plus 7, 
I will get 43 here. And if I add plus 7 in 50, that would be 57. So let's move on now to the next one. So we did the first part of this, so we need to do the second part. So the per first part, as I told you, we were adding 7 in all of them. So this was 43 and the next was 57. In this, the next one also, you need to look at the rule 3 to 6, 6 to 12, what's happening. You are basically multiplying it by 2. 3 multiplied by 2 is 6. 6 multiplied by 2 is 12. And what 12 multiplied by 2 will give us 24. And 48 multiplied by 2 will give us 96. That was an easy one. So let's move on to the next one. The next one is they're asking you a multi a multi-pack of 15 packets of crisp cost £3.90. A packet of crisp cost 35 pence if they are bought individually. Calculate how much cheaper. So basically, they want you to calculate how much cheaper it is to buy multi-packs of 15 packets of crisp than to buy 15 packets separately. So we just need to work out this. So we know that 35 pence into 15 packets, that is 450. And how much? Then you just need to. Add from 75 in this, that will give you 525, but that's not enough. But we also need to, we also need to find out how much is from 3.90. So you're just adding this up. Sorry, you're minusing it because they want you, uh, they're asking you how much it's calculated, how much cheaper it is to buy a multi-pack of 15 packets of crisps than to buy 15 packets separately. So you need to work out how much it is if you buy it separately, how much cheaper it is. So to work that out, what we found out is 5.25. You just need to minus it from £3.90. And when you do that, you will get your answer to 1.35 so it's 1.35 pence is cheaper if you buy it buy 50 packs individually or multi pack is which one is cheaper so you know yourself which one is cheaper so this is 35 packs 35 you're buying from 15 is 5.25 and if you find it individually is 1.35 so your answer is 1.35 Let's move on to the number eight now. Let me again zoom for you guys. Number eight, they have given you the length. The length of one statue mile is given as 1609.344 meters. Circle which of the following describe the position of six in the number above. So you just have to, uh, the answer for this one was easy, it's hundreds. Round the number 1609.344 to the nearest 10. So you need to do it nearest 10. You need to know your decimals again. And when you do it, your answer is 1610. Done this one. So let's move on to the next one now.
The next one is they are just asking you circle which of the four options below show our correct rotations of the word. The word is question which one is a rotation? That's an easy one. We understood is this one. Circle the four options below the reflection, which is of reflection. If I do it little up for you guys, sorry. I'll just do it little up to show you how to do it. Which one in examination? See the one which has E in it. It would be the first one. That's good. So let's move on to the next page. Remember, as I told you so many times in private schools, in the beginning, the papers are easy. And when you go down, you start getting little difficult papers. So in this one, they have given you a pie chart and they have asked you now. The pie chart below represents data collected in a survey of a summer holidays destinations of a sample of, of a school, school children. Half of the children went to Europe or to USA. So these are the two places the children went. Always remember the pie chart is 360. This is something you all have to remember. So let's see what they're asking us now. Half the channel went to USA and half went to. So this is your chart. So what they're asking you now, write down the angle of which representing the number of school children who did not go on a holiday. So they're asking you how many children did not go on a holiday. That was easy. Look at this one here. We are only looking at this one. So how many children didn't go on a holiday? That's 30. And they're asking, write down the fraction of children who travel to the USA, giving the answer in the simplest form. So you need the answer to be given in a fraction. Remember that. So how many went to USA? If I look at this, there are 45. And I, as I told you, that the pi is by 360 so you just need to simplify 45 by 360 and then you will get your answer as 1 8 so it's 1 8 so let's see the next one what they're asking us I'm just writing the answers again. I was 30. That was 1.8. Now they're asking a total of 180 children were asked to complete the survey. Calculate how many of the children went holiday to, to Africa. So again, you have to look at the chart. Let's go back. See Africa is 60. So you just need to Do it in a way, just do it 60 by 360. I'll just do it on the side so you don't get confused. So it'll be 60 by 360, multiply by 180. I'll take the zero to zero out and then I'll simplify it and I'll get the answer for this one would be 30. And the last one, what they're asking me is, this is how you do this one. And the last one, what they're asking me is, Estimate how many children would have visited Europe out of the whole of 1,600 pupils. So they're asking from the 1,600 pupils, how many of them got, went to, how many children would have visited Europe? So look at Europe here. Europe is this one. So how many of you did it? That's an easy one. 
Somehow, I'll give you guys a minute to do this. So you're finding how many of them went to Europe. I'll just stop a minute for the map to be shown to you all, to show the pie to you all. And then I will tell you the answer. Have you done it? So let's do it. The answer is an easy one. So they're asking you how many went how visited Europe. So you know that so with the way of doing this one is 135. You need to calculate how much you have done and then you just need to add them up and then you do it uh, divided by 360. That gives you 3 by 8 and you know how many children are there there are 1600 again you need to simplify that and when you simplify that you will get your answer to 600 that's your answer for number d of this one so let's move on to the next one number 11 again i'll zoom a little bit for you guys In this, they have shown you a diagram and they have told you on a long straight country road, there are four villages. I'll say the villages name like J, K, L and M, which are shown in the diagram below. Distance between the villages are shown by the arrow. So you need to work out the distance between Caston to Kerstin is this one here. From here to here, Kerstin to, no, you know, Kerstin would be the big one. So that's 26 minus 12, easy one. That would give you guys 14. So we got the first distance is 14. So let's see what else they are asking us now. So they are asking you from L to M, giving you answer in meters. So you need the next one you have to find is from L to M, distance between these two in meters. I'll stop a minute for you guys to have a look at this one. Then I'll show you the question. How did you find that? So let's do it now. I think so you have seen it now. So let's do it now. So number B is also an easy one. You just need to add 12 plus 23. That gives you 35 and then you have to divide it into 14. Oh, let me just, sorry, I'm doing number three. Let me do number two first. Then I'll come back to number three, number B, sorry. So in this one, you just need to do it 23. Twenty three minus fourteen that gives you nine, but they want you to tell you in meters. So when you do in meters, you just need to divide it, multiply it by thousand. So you get your answer is nine thousand. That's your answer for this one, and this one was fourteen. So the next one, what they're asking you now. That's an easy one. They are saying if a tourist cyclist as 14 kilometers per hour, work out how long her journey would take from J to M in hours and minutes. So we know that it's 12. Again, we have to look up 
because they have asked you i'll give you a minute they have asked you the journey from j to m so they are asking you the journey from here all the way to here if a tourist cycles at 14 km km per hour and work out how long her journey would take from johan to moreton in hours and minutes so you need to work out the hours and minutes how much the journey will work so i'll give you a minute to look at this then we can do the answer together so now let's do the answer for this one so we know that the journey was 12 so this was the information we 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 know it is 12 Plus twenty five gives you thirty five, but they're asking in kilometers, so divided by fourteen, that gives you two point five. So they want you to answer in hours and minutes. You know, two point five means two hours and thirty minutes. That's an easy one. So let's move on to number twelve now. There are nineteen questions in this one. If you guys always ask me, so in this they are saying a prime number has exactly two factors itself and one. The number from one to twenty inclusive are written on twenty cards. Write down the proportion of all the cards. I have a prime number written on them. giving your answer in a decimal so you need to find you need to give your answer in a decimal so how would you do this one that's easy i think so we didn't do oh sorry we didn't do number 12 so i'm back to number 12 now so let's do number 12 first then we'll come back to this one what you just saw So number twelve is they are showing you A, B, and C are three points on the grid. A is at five point five two, B is four five, and C is at three zero. Plot and label the two points from A to C and join the three points and lightly shade the triangle you formed. I'm really bad in drawing, so you basically. What you have to do is they are saying that from five to two, so your line needs to go up till here, then here, let me just do it again. I'm really bad in drawing, so basically you need to start doing it from three, what they have told you, so three. Two, three, oh, three to two. Here, then you go till five. Then you do go down here like this, and the same thing. you just need to join this like this and so we have done this one and next they are saying state the name of the type of triangle it has formed so what this triangle it's form it's s c a l e n e is that triangle what form and next they are asking a mirror line is marked on the dotted line x equals to 3 the triangle can be reflected in this mirror line so that point a ends up to new points b end up to new point draw the reflection image of the triangle across the mirror line from d to e so i'll do that then i'll show you the question from i'm going to label them 
this is D and this is E. So they are saying a mirror line, you just need to do reflection like this. That's for your number C. I'll show you the question after a minute. And the last one they're asking you, write down the coordinations of the new points. So let me show you the question to you guys. So they're asking you, what is the new coordinations? The new coordinations, what we did is one, two, and two, five. Is one, two, and two, five. I'll, the question is here for you guys to have a look. It's one, two, and two, five. If you, if you reverse the way we stop the video and go back and you see what I draw, then you will come to know what it was. And next they are saying, write down which new points completes this triangle in a diagram and briefly, and explain briefly when it means a triangle is isolates. So I'll draw it again for you because you need to answer all the questions. So let me draw it again for you. It's basically you need to go up here like this, like this, then like this, what we draw before, what we did draw before. I'm just trying to draw that again so you guys can see it. Sorry about that, my drawing is really bad. Just that with D and that goes So something like this you draw and you just answer all the questions what they're asking you. So if you draw it like this, the first one they asked you is, they ask you point the level of points from B to C and your answer for that one would definitely will be a scale S. S-E-A-L-E-N-E -E -E, and the next one they're asking you draw a reflection you just the drawing what I draw just do a reflection there and after you do a reflection what happens it becomes one two and two five and the last one they're asking you write down a new point completes this triangle in the diagram that explain it means that the triangle is actually so if you look at the point E what we draw Point E will form an isosceles because an isosceles triangle has two sides of equal length. So you, you know that a length uh, is isosceles when you have two sides are equal. So let's move on to number 13 now. Number 13 was the one I was reading to you guys before. Number 13 is they are saying a prime number has exactly two factors itself and one. The number from 1 to 20 inclusive are written in 20 cards. Write down the proportion of the cards that have a prime number written on them, giving your answer in decimals. So let's look at from 1 to 20. We just need to write from 1 to 20. Remember that is 2, 3, 
फाइव सेवन इलेवन थर्टीन सेवेंटीन एंड नाइनटीन एंड द नेक्स्ट दे आर आस्किंग यू इज यू जस्ट नीड टू कैलकुलेट हाउ मेनी आर देर 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 आर एट सो जस्ट डू इट एट एंड यू नो हाउ मेनी कार्ड्स आर देर देर आर ट्वेंटी एट बाई ट्वेंटी just try to simplify that and your answer is 4 by 10 is 4 by 10 and then try putting 4 by 10 is decimal don't simplify that further that will be 0. Four. That was an easy one. Let's move on to the next one now. Number fourteen. In number fourteen, they are saying that the. table and the bar chart below shows the number of cars sold by a car showroom each day for a week monday tuesday wednesday and they say use information in the table and the bar chart to complete the entry from mon for wednesday in the table and the bar for friday in the chart so you need to complete that so you just do use the information you're just using the information and bar chart to complete the entry of the table in the bar chart so you need to think what is on friday it's given friday is 4 that's easy you just need to go on 4 circle it and then sunday you need to find out sunday 5 plus 3 is just minus it is 2 and then same way we'll do here we'll get the 6 so we know that sunday is 6 and go all the way to 6 and do it like this that's for your sunday the next one what they asking you is i'm going to read that for you then i'll show you the question the next thing they asking you the total number of cars sold in the week were 28 use the information to help complete both the table and the bar chart with sundays with sundays entry so how did we found that Sunday was six, because we know the total cars which were sold were twenty eight, and how much is given to you till here? So you know that till here it's given to you is twenty two. So you just need to minus for the second one. You just need to minus twenty eight minus twenty two. That gives you six. So this is the way how I wrote six here. and then you just need to show in your bar chart how to do it so let me go up to show you the question now this is our bar chart it goes here and the next one what we we already did that they asked us to find how many are in sunday 28 minus how many we got just minus it by 22 and then we get is 6 So let's move on to the next one, number fifteen. There are nineteen in this. If you are again asking me, so the first one is. I'll put the diagram here. I'll just keep reading the questions to you guys. The first one is the diagram shows the plan of a rectangle garden of local celebratory LCC with an L-shaped 
fish pond in the middle. The dimensions of the garden and the pond are shown. So they want to, the first one they want you is to work out the area of the fish pond. To founding the area of the fish pond is easy. You just multiply 5, multiply by 4, that gives you 20. And the next is 2, multiply by 2, that gives you 4, just add them up. 2 multiplied by 2 gives you 4. And we are just adding that up and we get 24. And the next one, what they're asking you is now, we found the first one is 24. So the next, what they're asking you is, work out the area of the lawn. So you need to work out the area of the lawn. So how would you find the area of the lawn? That's an easy one. 8 is to 12. That gives me 96 because we just need to find the area of the lawn. You just need to find this area here. And we know that's already given here 8. Just multiply 8 by 12. So area of the lawn would be 8. Multiply by 12. That's for number one. Number two, I'm doing it here. Eight multiplied by 12 is 96. And then just subtracted by 24, what we you already got in the previous one. And then your answer with P will be 72. That's the area of the lawn. So Lewis wants to put a stone path in the edge of the garden just inside the existing perimeter fence. Each fencing step is square with sight 1 meter. So you need to work out. You need to work out how many paving slips are needed to complete his path. So I'll show you the question again. And now do it. He wants to put a stone path around the edge of the garden. So in the edge of the garden, he wants to put a edge of the garden just inside the existing perimeter fence. So in within the existing perimeter fence, each paving slab is squared with the site one meter. So you know that it's one meter. So we know that is 12 plus 8 is given to us. Plus this one would also be 12 and this one will be 8. So all these sides will be same. This one will be also 12 and this one would be 8. So add all these up. If you add all of these, what would you get? So let's do that now. So remember, we need to add 12 plus 12 plus 8 plus 8 for this one. So let's do it. Twelve plus twelve plus eight plus eight that gives me forty, and then I have to minus it by four because I have four sides in that, and that would be give me my answer to thirty six. So let's move on to the next part now. Now they are saying that that Lewis hires a builder to lay the path. The builder charges eight pounds per hour basis labor for the. I'll just zoom it. I think so you can't see it. Yeah, that's better now. 
labor of the job for the job then he pays 1.50 per slap he lies if he takes three and a half hours to finish his job what is overall fees so you need to find out the overall fees so he it's eight hour is given to you in three and a half if I, another way of doing it, it's eight multiplied by five is to two then try and simplifying it you will get your answer to 28 and after getting that he charges one pound five just multiply that by 36 and then you'll get your answer to 54. That was an easy one. Let's move on to the next one now. The next one is Lewis and decide to plant a row of bushes round the inside of the stone path. Each bush is to be planted 20 centimeters from the edge of the path and 50 centimeters from its neighboring bushes. So the diagram below displays how this might look near a corner of the garden. So now they want you to calculate how many bushes are required to build this in total. So how many bushes are there required to build this in total? You know that a bush would be something like this. It will be 10 by 6. That would be what information we all know. So then we'll do 10 multiply by 2. Multiply by 2. That gives me 40. And then another side would be 6 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2. That gives me 24. And then we just, we need to add 24, add 40. That gives me 64. Again, you need to minus it by 4 and that gives you 60. That's how many bushes are required to build in total. I'll wait for a minute then I'll go move on to the next one. There are five here, there were five would be the other side. That's why we did that. So let's move on to number 16 now. Sixteen, they're asking in five of this midterm test, each out of 10 marks, Darshan scores 9 in Mathematics, 6 in English, 8 in Geography, 4 in History, and 8 in Science. Write down the modem, mode of Darshan's 5 scores. So you just need to write 9, 8, 8, 6, 4. Mode is the most common one. 8 is common. So your answer is 8. Work out the range of the marks that Dashin got. 
range is the highest minus the lowest that gives you 5 calculate the mean average of the score he achieved in this five test to do that you need to add them up and see how much they are so 9 plus 6 plus 8 plus 4 plus 8 divided by 5 and you add them up you will get 35 divided by 5 that will give you your answer to 7. So I'll move up now for the next one. The next is now they're asking you. I'm just writing, I'll just write the six again if you can. This is five and this is seven. I'll just rub that out. So, next, what they're asking you is they're asking you after his French marks is announced, does an average score from the six test falls to 6.5 marks? Calculate the mark he scored in in maths so they want you to calculate his mask his mask sorry his marks in french so it's 6.5 multiplied by 6 that gives you 39 and you just need to minus it from 35 That's the score he achieved from all these marks. That would be 4 for this one. And the last one, what they're asking you, I'll show you. In last one, they're saying the pass mark for each test is 50%. Write down what fraction of Dushan 6 test, including is French, he managed to pass, leaving your answer in the simplest form. So there were six exams. You know that it was 9, 8, 8, 6, 4, and 4. And he passed 4 and he failed 6. So there were, there were 4 he passed out of 6. Simplify that more and that will be 2 third. That's your answer for this one. So let's move on to the next page. The next they are asking you, in the end of the test, Dushan scores 15 out of 20 in his history. Work out what percentage improvement did he get in his marks. You need to work out the improvement. So from 40%, he went up to 75% just need to minus 75 minus 40 that gives you 35 the next one is work out what time it is now if the time has passed since 9 o'clock this morning is 5 times as much as the time that is left left before 11 o'clock this morning so we know that they are saying two hours two hours equals to how many minutes it's 120 minutes and they are saying work out uh, the time past nine o'clock this morning five times five times is 5t as the time so let me write ft little nicely so you don't get confused so it's f t plus t gives me 60 
So how much is 60 equals to 120? And then if you need to find T, remember, you do the opposite when you go that side. That's multiply here. You divide there by 6. You will get 20. So how many minutes is that? It's 20 minutes. And when you do it in 20 minutes, you will get the answer as 11. We're done with this one now. So let's move on to number 18. Number 18 has two parts. The 18 has two parts. And number one is in one tree, two champs can eat three bananas in four minutes. Work out how long it would take two champs to eat six bananas. So we do it six by two gives me three so two is to four will give me six sorry two four uh will give me eight you need to remember you need to multiply not add it the same way as the mistake i did first don't do that so your answer is eight and the last one is not the last one in this section Work out how many chants would be required to eat 21 bananas in 8 minutes. You can assume that the tree has a large number of bananas available and the chants all have the big appetite. They eat a lot. So we know that 20 by 6, if I put that in point, it will be 3.5. So just need to multiply 3.5, just multiply it by 2. That will give you your answer at 7. Good. That's the last one. Last question. So let's do that one fast. Then this will complete your... I like this one a lot. So let's do it now. So they are saying... The 16 shape in the grid shows contains a number of following rules. The numbers in the circles are four more than the numbers in the squares on the same row. The numbers in the triangles are double those or numbers in the squares on the same row. So you need to complete the, complete the missing number in squares. So you need to complete the missing numbers in the square. So let's do in the square the missing numbers. And the next one they're asking complete in the circles and triangles. So you need to complete the missing numbers in the squares. And then you number B is you need to complete the missing numbers in the circles and triangles. So let's do all of them now. So we know that we have a three here. And how would we do that? Now, this is easy. Try doing it. Square, I think so would be 5 here. And here, I think so, we'll write a 2. This all will also be 2. 2 is 2. 6. 6 minus 2 is 4. And the next one, you need a 6 here. So I know this would be a 3. This would be a 7. 6, 7. And this one here would be a 15. And here, I think so would be a eight. If 
four twos and eight. Be eight here. And this is the way how you do it. So let's move on to number C in that. Number C was really interesting. You got this one. Well done to you. So let's move to the number C in this one now. Number C is they just want you to identify the pattern. You just need to put the signs in and complete number C. So it was easy. I think so in the middle. What we did up, you just need to do that. So you multiply it. Then you minus it. And then you equal it. That was the one you did. Complete the grid above by adding the print number to the hexagen using your formula. So we need to use this formula we used up what I did. I used the same formula here. I multiplied it and then I and number E is the last one. They're asking you if the fifth row is added below to the four displayed, write on what number would be in the fifth one. So five multiply by nine minus 10. That gives me 35. For five, nine, 10 with wrong operation. So this is the way. We did it. They're saying fifth row in a row added below the four displays. Write down what number would be in the fifth. If they had a, a fifth one, this is four, remember? If they add one more, what would be your sequence B? So this is what they're asking you. So we know the sequence. If you look at this one, so we are multiplying first, then we are minusing, and then we are doing equal to. So this one is, if you look at this one, you are multiplying, you're minusing, and then you're doing equal to. This is the way how we I filled up the top ones if you don't know how to do it. So with this, we come to the end of this paper. And I hope you all like this paper. It was an easy paper, not so bad. And if you have not subscribed to our channel, please do it now. And that's it. I'll put the paper in the in the description for you guys to try doing it yourself. It was an easy paper. Only the last two one were a little hard, were a little confusing. But then with my help, you got to do it. How to do it? That's fine. I'll see you guys back on Friday for your creative writing class. Just give a thumbs up if you like it. And don't forget to subscribe if you have not. Bye.